This is what a non-peaceful death looks like. The majority of my videos are about how peaceful death can be, but people always ask me, okay, what does a non-peaceful death look like? And there are examples of that, and there are ways that can show up in the dying process. So I wanna go over those in this video. So trigger warning, this is going to be a video about one of the things that can happen during the death and dying process that makes it not peaceful, at least for a little bit. This is not my patient. I've been given permission to share this video and it's going to show you restlessness, agitation, something we call terminal agitation. This doesn't necessarily mean that they're severely in pain or they're severely suffering. This is just a way that a non-peaceful death can present itself. There's always things we can do. It usually doesn't last forever. We always can manage it, but I still wanna give an example of it. So trigger warning, here is the video. So what you're seeing in that video is a woman suddenly sitting up in bed and kind of screaming or making a noise. And of course, that looks like she's in pain. If you were in that room, you'd wanna be doing something about that, including myself as a hospice nurse. Dying is a process. And depending on what you're dying from, your personality, how old you are, there's so many things that can come into play in the dying process. So the things you're seeing don't necessarily always need to be as alarming as they look. Now, as a hospice nurse, if I was in that situation, I would medicate for that. I would call that, I guess, terminal agitation or even restlessness. I would look to see, does she have to urinate? Is she constipated? Those are two big things that can make people act that way. So there's always things we can assess. And if we can't figure out why they look agitated or restless, we usually will medicate. Besides terminal agitation, there are other things you can see in a non-peaceful death. Some of those things that I usually see are severe nausea and vomiting, severe shortness of breath, severe pain, or seizures. Again, not everyone and most people really won't experience these things, at least not consistently. And what I see in people who do, it's usually in waves. So it's not like the steady flow of never stopping, just pure suffering. It's always like a long period of peacefulness and then a wave of symptoms popping up again and we need to manage those symptoms. And it can look non-peaceful in those moments because we're managing the symptom. Now, depending on how long it takes to manage the symptom is how long this non-peaceful episode will last. A lesser known route but more effective is to give medications rectally. And the Macy catheter is a great way to facilitate that. Today's video is sponsored by the Macy catheter, which is a device that is placed rectally to help facilitate giving medications to control all of those symptoms that I was just talking about. Many people are turned off by the fact that this is placed in the rectum. However, I can tell you from firsthand experience, it's an excellent way to give medications to manage symptoms. If you wanna learn more, please check out the link in my description. So as hospice care providers, there are several things we can do to help manage these symptoms to make the death more peaceful. When all else fails and we've tried all of the things and the person still does not appear to be comfortable, we can palliatively sedate them. This is something we rarely do, but it is something that can be done on hospice. The best thing I can say is there are ways to try to prevent and get ahead of the dying process to help make it more peaceful in the long run. And a lot of those things that you guys can do are things like you're already doing, which is educating yourself, knowing what death and dying looks like, talking to your loved ones, your friends, your family, all of you guys discussing how you want that your end of life to be. Do you wanna be in the hospital? Do you wanna be at home? Do you wanna be resuscitated? Do you not wanna be resuscitated? Do you want music in the room while you're dying? Do you not? So all of these things will help everyone prepare themselves. So education, education, education is the first thing you can do to help facilitate a peaceful death. The more we can educate ourselves about what the end of life actually looks like, the better we can plan and the more peaceful we can die.